Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to review American Horror Story Season 3. And I know that it's been a long time since I last reviewed the first two seasons, and I was trying to do the whole series... Uh, what happened was I started watching X-Files, and that basically consumed me, <laughs> because it, it was like, it was like this grand epic universe, and it was even worse, because, like, every season they just kept on adding and adding on to the confusing mythology, and adding and adding on with these confusing trash characters, and so it really would have been impossible for me to devote attention to that and and this. And so I stopped watching briefly. And I finally came back. I watched like two episodes last week. And then I watched the rest of them today. So I watched ten episodes of American Horror Story today. And wow, I am just... I am blown away by this trash. Okay, and and now it, it wasn't like trash like the whole thing like you know season 11 or season 10. It was it uh it, it it's so disappointing though. It really is it's one of those things where it it's another thing where you just cringe because of the wasted potential. You have these actors who are giving, like, A-plus performances to where, if the writing was good, they'd be getting Emmy nominations. You know, in fact, let's check, did... Let's check, because I can guarantee they didn't win shit. Let's see. Nope. Or, wait. It says... Kathy Bates won an Emmy for her performance in the third season. So that's it. Those are the... And then somebody won in the second season. So there's only ever been two Emmys in the entire American Horror Story history. Obviously, it's not going to be the writing because the writing's trash. It's going to be for the acting. And that's not surprising because she was a highlight of the season. Although she did eventually become wasted. And I just, I don't really know what to do here. Because, uh, let's see, it's like 22 minutes to quiet time. And so, if I keep going past, then I don't know. I hope nothing weird happens. So, uh. I just, at the same time, like, maybe I could do a second part of this review tomorrow, because I'm so pissed off, I just want to, like, just unload, because I, ugh. there's so many things with this season especially, I mean, with the second season, it was less, with the first season, it was even less, this was like a, it, it was a, it was a, it was a storm, it was like a trash storm. It was like standing in a storm of trash. Where trash is just flying at you. You got trash rain. You got trash wind. You got trash avalanches. Like this was just the biggest trash storm I've ever ever experienced. And I didn't have any umbrella. I didn't have any rain jacket. I, I had nothing. And I just stood there accepting the trash as it flew on to me and it just made me feel like I needed to take a shower and fucking wash the trash off of myself because that's how trash it got it got so trash that I just it just it made, it created a whole new meaning of the word trash but at the same time there were so many good things and and let's see like was there one good thing that <sighs> I'm trying to think because it's tough. It's really... No. No. 
every single good thing the season had ended in trash. And it was frustrating because I knew, based on all of these other seasons, and people have talked about this before too, that they start off really, really good and they end trash. And I knew it was coming. It's just I didn't want to accept it because I thought, ugh, maybe this will be an exception. But no, it was really, really bad. I mean, to the point of where I just thought, God, like, these guys get to write this shit? Like, they get, like, th this is ridiculous. Like, the fact that they get, they got to write this shit. I mean, th this, this fucking season, this fucking finale... The fucking, what was the fuck, the fucking seven fucking wonders, it's, it's more like the seven trash wonders, I mean, this was, it was horrible, it was terrible, it was so disappointing, it, it, it just, it, it infuriates me how badly this show got at the end of the season, because the rest of the season I felt like, oh wow, this is gonna go somewhere really good, I'm really excited, I've got my vanilla cupcake on deck. I've got uh I've got my spittle on deck as well cuz we all know this 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 season there's a lot of spit action. Uh so I don't I, that doesn't even make any sense. Why did I even say that? Okay. Anyways, I am where do I even begin? I mean <laughs> <laughs> Where do I even begin with this season? <laughs> I am so mentally scarred. I am so, like, just... Uh, I'm, like, brain damaged after watching this terrible season. <laughs> I mean, for starters... Okay, let's, let's start off. You have this girl... And believe me, we're gonna go through the whole thing, because the, the because it, it, I I have turned into Kyle in the show, like Zombie Kyle, like that is how bad the show was. Is that I am now, I have gone backwards. I am no longer Marco the reviewer. I am now Marco the zombie. Like just that, that's how bad this was. So we start off, we have this girl, she's like a, I mean, how would I even describe her? She's, she's, she's like the Cheerios of actresses, and she, you know, you start off, she is basically like the teenage girl substitute, or what would you call it? The, what's that thing they call when like a woman like gets a, a pregnancy that's not hers, but it's hers at the same time. What are they? A surrogate. She's like, she's like the stand-in, like the surrogate teenage girl. Where, like, all the teenage girls watching this shitty show, they can all see themselves represented in her. That's literally the whole point of her character. And you think, like, oh, okay, she's the main character. That's expected. We got this boring, vanilla, neutral character, and she will be the vehicle that, for you to see the witch world, and then uh, she will be the main character until the end. But no, instead, there is no main character, there is no main villain, and uh, this this Cheerios girl, or let, what did I call her when I... The, the teenage witch, let's just call her fucking, uh, Bland the Teenage Witch or something, I don't know. Like, by the end of the show, she literally serves no purpose at all. She just stands there like a dope. Uh, she, she does some really stupid shit. I mean, just every character in this season, too, like, I, I could not stand these stupid characters and their stupid decisions. But the thing was, was that they weren't making the decisions based off of what their characters would really do. They were making their decisions based off of what the plot needed them to do. And so, you had, like, this character, 
and and for starters do I go through her whole story well I guess I have to kind of start too so she she has a boyfriend and uh her parents are away so she wants to have sex with them and then uh, she kills him on accident it's like this power that she only uses once again and then it never comes into play ever later on in the season it's basically a plot convenience power so that she can uh, do something else later on in the episode so then what and, and she could have done something else to achieve that too which we'll talk about so what happens is is that the witch organization, whatever there is, a, it, they said that all the witches have died off, and then at the end of the season you see like these thousands of witches who are waiting to get into this mansion so that they can fangirl over the new supreme witch. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And where how does this where did this organization come from? How do they make any money? Uh, where do, did they get all these witches from if there aren't any witches? It doesn't make any sense. And so they get this girl. you guys tell what I thought? They, they get Bland the Teenage Witch at Cheerios, and they take her to the finishing school for the, 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 the girls. For What did they call it? Like the, the witch finishing school? I don't know. I mean... It, it's bizarre because, like, the only finishing that they do in the school is the finishing in the bedroom, and that's about it. Like, they literally don't even do any schoolwork at this school. It's just complete trash. It's a complete trash school. It only has, like, a couple of teachers. They don't do jack shit. They just let these girls just run around, do whatever they want, sit around sipping coffee, talking about fucking Stevie Nicks' fucking overrated ass and fucking uh, doing witchcraft until they're blue in the face. I mean, God. It, I just... Sometimes, like, you know, you have to wonder, like, do the writers even think? Like, do they even have the ability to think? Or do they just fucking puke all over the paper? Because that's what this felt like. It just felt like... All over the paper. Like, it's literally the the equivalent of throw-up. Of just, like, just puking just a random bunch of nonsense onto a piece of paper. And expecting me to take it seriously and to say, yeah, this is really good. Like, sorry, but... I... I <sighs> <laughs> and we're not even we're not even started yet. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to split this into two parts because I don't know. Uh there's so much stuff to talk about. So then she's at the finishing school and we're introduced to the other witches. Ow! Sorry, I just burned my hand on the heater um, because I was like, okay, so you have Nan, and she is a clairvoyant, and she ends up becoming really annoying. She has this weird subplot with this guy named Luke. He doesn't really mean anything to the plot whatsoever. He has an abusive mom. She's not a mean, She's not important to the plot either. And then she ends up not being important because they kill her. And it's like, wow, bye-bye. And then you have Queenie. Now, I gotta be honest, guys. I really liked Queenie at first. I thought, wow, she's gonna be my favorite character of the season. But then, in episode 5 or 6, there's this whole shoehorned convenient story where suddenly she switches sides and she betrays everyone and she betrays especially her her new friend and she completely becomes like she makes I gotta say like she makes the dumbest decisions of any character 
in American Horror Story history. And that's saying something, okay? When you have characters like Ursula and Alma from American Horror Story Season 10. No, this bitch takes the cake, uh, literally, probably. You know, she'll take the whole cake and eat it. And then probably try, try to eat me for criticizing uh, this fucking trash character. Because th this character, like, she, she was so good at first, and she was so cool, her powers were so cool, and she just, ju just does the stupidest shit ever. Like, for instance, she's like, she's sitting there, and she's eating, she's just stuffing her face with all the food in the house, and this isn't me making fun of her, like, this is their idea of a character. Uh, and that's another, <laughs> that's another funny thing is that, like, this season tries to have all these agendas, and it tries to be so, you know, typical, like, 2022 type of shit, but it, it's so, like, stereotypical, and, like, the, the way that people are, and, like, you have, uh, you know, all the black people do voodoo, and then you have, like, uh, Kathy Bates ends up, what her character does near the end, it's like everyone is like a stereotype, and especially Queenie. And she, she just makes, like, for instance, she's sitting there stuffing her face. And she's like, I'm going to have this chicken pot pie. And after that, I'm going to have a sandwich. And after that, I'm going to have dessert. And it's like, God. And, and she's sitting there, and she's like, Dr. Phil says that food is a substitute for the love that's missing. And so I want some love. And so then they have this shoehorned in, rushed, plot convenient story where there's a minotaur for other reasons. I mean, there are so many random fucking shit plots and shit things that happen. I can't even begin to go through it because I'd be here for hours. Hours. Telling you guys about the endless, endless stuff that happened, the, the gobbledygook, the nonsensical rubbish that happened, just a million things just flinging shit at the wall at this point. But there's a Minotaur, it's after Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates asks Queenie to protect her, uh, and it's sort of like a, a good sequence because you're thinking... Well, actually, we haven't talked about Kathy Bates yet, so this wouldn't make any sense. But to get to the point, she literally goes to, she leads the Minotaur into, like, a stable. And she she lets the Minotaur have sex with her. And keep in mind, this isn't human. This is a, a, a demon at this point. And so she willingly has sex with a Minotaur. And, uh, and the Minotaur almost kills her, because... <laughs> and the way that she does it, too, like, she, she, like, oh, God, it was so gross. Because I was thinking, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, is this some sort of a fake-out where you're going to chop his head off when he comes near you? No. Like, she lets him, she lets the Minotaur men her tar uh okay and it, it it's literally the only reason why it happens by the way is just so that she can be taken out of the picture so that then they can have this whole zombie thing happen where it's like night of the living dead but trash and she can't do anything to help them at that point because uh she's hurt from the minotaur uh basically like obliterating her in fact they didn't even really like describe like that's another weird thing is like they never really question why did you have sex with a minotaur they never really question too like or they never really explain what exactly did he do because they showed like all this blood on her shirt but it's like i don't understand like did he did, did he, like, go through her? Did he, like, impale her to the point of where it came out of her stomach and it's, like, just blood squirting everywhere? Like, I have no idea 
what the fuck even happened. Uh, but it's just like, oh, I got terribly hurt. And it's like, okay. I, whatever you say, Dr. Phil fan. Uh, and, and so, that's just one of many things. And the mind-boggling thing is that after she does this portrayal, well, okay, <laughs> but after she does this portrayal, she acts like she didn't do anything. And she acts almost like the character who she betrayed shouldn't even care. And she, she, she acts like nothing happened, practically. It's, it's bizarre. And that was the weird thing of sitting here watching all these ten episodes was the fact that the the whole ten hours it was just flip, flop, flip, flop, character switching sides, uh, betraying each other, making alliances with someone else. It, it was so frustrating and so bad and so sloppy and so messy. And it was like, I could understand maybe enjoying this if you watched like an episode a week maybe but even then you know I would definitely still hate the second half but watching this all at once was like a it, it was like a headache of mass of massive proportions because you could just see the the machinations of of the plot of like character switches sides Character does this stupid thing. Character has to clean up for that character. Character dies. Character's brought back to life. And so it was really frustrating. And, and I wrote a lot of notes too throughout the day. It's really frustrating how storylines pick up and drop off at the convenience of the writers. It's like, okay, just forget about that storyline because we're done with it. Uh, until we will use it again and it's like no that's not how storytelling works you don't decide when the story ends the story ends when it's going to end and so that was frustrating and it was terrible and then of course uh, teenage witch is so lazy at one point and and see, a lot of this stuff isn't even going to make sense because then you're going to ask, well, why did that happen? Well, why did that happen? Uh, just go along with it. You know, you don't even want to know. It's trash. It's terrible. It's, uh, it's really bad. The teenage witch, she's so fucking lazy and so white bread, generic, bland, uh, not even vanilla at this point. She chooses to release the spirit of a serial killer rather than just search the entire house for the dead body of another main character, Madison Montgomery. Uh, so she's so fucking lazy. And that's the other thing, too, is that if, because that girl died, there was this uh, group of three people who came to find out who did it and then punish them. But then we, we, it's like, wait a second, did they not search the entire house either? <laughs> like, just literally all they had to do was search the house, and they would have, <laughs> they would have found the body. <laughs> I mean, at least with Better Call Saul Season 6, they had the excuse of, you know, they didn't know where Howard's body was. You know, they didn't know it's below that meth lab. And so how would they know to search there? But these bitches are literally all in the same house. And there's there's such dimwits, they can't even figure out to search the entire house. is like the first thing they should do. <laughs> and so it's already quiet time now. It's, I'm fucked. Uh, I guess I'll have to, I'll, I, get, I might go outside and finish the rest of this, although I do have a lot of notes, uh, so I think I will go outside, though, because I, I want to get it done tonight rather than, like, 
keep all the energy in and release it tomorrow as well. So, and the last thing that I'll say before I go outside is there's a really conflicting atheist sort of agenda. They make sure to say that there's nothing on the other side. And yet, all the people in the show can be brought back to life. But where are they brought back from? And they, they, they do say that like everyone has their own personal hell. But it's like, wait, how did that be created? Like, where did that come from? And then there's an angel of death in the series. But what about other angels? Because if there's an angel of death, that implies there's other angels as well. So, and then you have the fact that if anyone can just be brought back to life, then why would there need to be an execution for killing people? You know, like, why would you need to be punished for something that can just be undone, like a, you know, an undo button on a on a typing thing. You know, when you type something, and you you're like, uh, and and you delete it, and then you undo it, and it appears back again. It's like if it's that simple, then why even care? Okay, so I'm now gonna go outside because it's it's quiet time. So, uh. So this isn't something that I've normally done before, but it's, it's just something I thought of doing for this video. And I know that I look really, I look like a serial killer who like, you know, maybe like, okay, like, you know that sequence in The Fanatic where he goes into the guy's house and he's like, he's creeping around like, like that, that could be a scene like where I'm creeping around a house and then I'm like, ooh, a cupcake. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, I am, I thought of doing this, I think this is one of the few times, uh, for some reason, that just this just popped into my head. I really wanted to do this because I, you know, I talk and I talk about American Horror Story and the sexiness of Jessica Lange and how it is completely unmatched. And by the way, it is so fucking cold in here. Like, you want to know one of the ways that one of the reasons that I really believed that medium when she when she talked to me about this house is because it is in the late 50s slash 60 degrees outside. On the inside, on, inside this house, it is like 10 degrees. My fingers are like... They're like icicles. Like, it is It is really, like, just, ugh. Like, it's really cold in here. Uh, so I'm going to try to hurry this up. But for some reason, I wanted to do this. I wanted to... I am going to eat Jessica Lang because I'm going to share with you guys. This is what Jessica Lang is in food form. And everything she's in, she is just a sweet delicious Kimberly's Vanilla Cupcake. And I know what you guys are going to say. Marco, you just wanted to fucking eat a Vanilla Cupcake. Well, and it even smells delicious. I mean, just everything about this is delicious, as is Jessica Lang. I mean, you you got, I mean, oh, I mean, where, where are you? And let's, let's caress it. Let's treat it like a woman. Let's treat it. You know, let's treat it like a delicious, like a, you know, like this was made by uh, some famous chef named uh, uh, Raisley Prin Prinbone. You know, let's let's pretend. First off, you got this this big mountain of icing on top. I mean, you, you know, they say that's just the icing on the cake. Well, this is the icing on this cupcake. This delicious, and let's just. Mmm, got some sprinkles, and the sprinkles, they're not too big, you know, they're not going to, you know, be really hard and unpleasant like some sprinkles. Oh, yeah, and you got this, oh, this mountain of icing. People are going to think this is like a fetish video or something, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to relate to you guys what my thought process is when... I rate things in terms of food, 
when I rate people in terms of food, movies, TV shows. This is what I'm kind of thinking about, like the different elements, the components. And then you've got, see, and, and, oh, we shouldn't undress her yet. We shouldn't. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, I'm being as respectful as possible, okay? Uh, and then you've got the, the buttery, the buttery, thick cake. And you've got, oh, and you know what's good about Kimberly's cupcakes? There's this thick glob of icing. There, there's not just the icing on the cake. There's the icing on the inside, too. And you know what they say, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge this cupcake, because they got some, some, mmm. They just got this pocket of cream, this pocket of sexy white cream. And it's just, oh, yeah. And you think this one's good? The chocolate ones are amazing. They have red velvet. Uh, they have pumpkin uh, one time, I think last year, when I used to eat these like once a month. And oh, yeah. So, okay. And, and you know, I was going to eat this. I was just going to eat this and be like, okay, this is, this is, you know. But then something happened this season. Something just had to fucking happen to mess with my Jessica Lane cupcake. And I can get loud here. I can't be this loud at the new place. So fucking excuse me if I don't start raging about this cupcake because I am pissed. I brought a little surprise. Okay. I have been digging for artifacts in this in the yard, the backyard for weeks now. I have found like hundreds and hundreds of artifacts. It's really hilarious because it just shows this is definitely this is definitely a historical property. And anyone destroying it is just purposefully an asshole. Uh, so this is the head of an axe. Uh, so here's the other side. This is a really cool artifact that I found. And, and I was thinking, like, you know, why did I find this? This was, a, this was a, a warning sign. This was a sign. It was saying, Marco, the axe man is coming. The axe man is going to come and take away your cupcake. It's going to take away... Jessica Lane's cupcakes! Not on my watch! Fuck you, X-Men! You're not getting my Jessica Lane cupcake! Get out of here! You're going back to the display case. And so, okay, Jessica, please, please, let's do it now. Let's just, let's just. Come on, we, we just, we gotta get it over with, we gotta do it, we gotta, oh no, look guys, she's aged, there's, there's missing cake, this, 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 I don't know if I can save the sponge, her delicious sponge, there it is, yeah, it's still there, she still got it, Hmm. She's still got it in every way, shape, or form. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, for the main course. Let's just say, I am, I'm, I'm not, I'm just playing a character here. I'm just having fun. I don't eat like this. But, I'm going to eat like this today. Oh. Mmm. Oh, hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Jessica Lang. Oh. God, God, God. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know what Elmer Gantry would say right now? He'd say, Marco, that's fucking gluttony. 
I know what plot me. I'm sorry, I just love Jessica Lange so much. Oh. Mmm. Oh, see? There's a glob in the middle. This is the special part. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh. This is all that's left of Jessica Lake. What am I gonna do? It's all that's left of the goddess, the blonde goddess, Jessica Lake. Please, uh, please be okay. I don't have what's that? What was that? What? I don't have Misty Day here to resurrect you back from the dead. It's all over now. Oh. Might as well favor the sexiness of Jessica Lang. <sighs> Probably not a good idea to do this. Mm. So does that make my point? Marco out.